Listen, we love everyone who listens to this podcast. I'm sorry it's not for you. When Curtis <laughs> pitched this idea to me, I was like, this is a good excuse to play all these games with my friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, not to say that I don't love that people listen. I'm just consistently shocked that people listen to this shit and seem to enjoy it. <laughs> Indeed. And when I say enjoy it, I mean the Every F and FF podcast, <laughs> and I'm Carl. And I'm Curtis. I'm Alex. We're doing it out of order. We Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. this was the this is actually the intended order. We just rarely yeah. get around to it. This is the I the do not sign order. off on that. <laughs> <laughs> the machete the machete order. Yeah. I see. Is this like a this is like where um they tell you to watch Star Wars episode That's the machete order. Is that it? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where they do I think it's uh four, five, one, two, three, and then six. Speaking of the huh. Millennium Falcon, that that is a ship in FF4. You know what was my favorite part of Star Wars? When they met that that whale of the <laughs> lunar variety. There's always a bigger fish. Jabba the Hutt was kind of <laughs> like was a, a big whale. goober fish. It was a big goober fish <laughs> named the Lunar Whale. You know who was also Bombad General? <laughs> Cecil. Uh. So let's see, what did we do? We just um, we took care of the giant of Babel, right? Kicked his fucking ass. Kicked his ass. Speaking of the Falcon, we spent like one episode on the Falcon before we just tossed it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We got it, and then we, yeah, we just took it to Mesidia and got the Lunar Whale. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just parked right outside of Mesidia for all eternity. Yeah. It's got three miles on it. <laughs> Only drove it to church on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> during, during this episode of content i did get back in the falcon and take it to the underworld so i could go buy more shurikens and fuma for um edge so yeah so there, i need to do that i honestly. did use it yeah i also need to do that it is super helpful in the final boss i will tell you that yep um i think the fuma do like seven thousand damage or something like that it's when insane. thrown by edge it's a lot but they cost like a million dollars it's ridiculous that's fine i got fucking i literally have over a million gil at this point Mwah, and like i was i was doing a lot of we're getting i'm getting a little ahead but i i did a lot of running in this episode uh, like in the research for this episode and i was just dropping like a shit ton of gil and then i would check yeah. and be like i'm still at 1.3 million gil i think i can stand <laughs> to drop whatever i'm dropping right but um but yeah, it's time for us to go back to the moon and uh, take it to Zemus. Stick yeah. it to him. Take what to Zemus? It. Uh, it. Yeah. You know. Because I tried going down to Zemus's hole and they didn't <laughs> let, the crystals didn't let me last time. Yeah, the crystals won't let you in the hole yet. So why is it let you now? Oh, yeah. Uh, so the reason for that is uh, because the... I think the, the giant? giant of Babel was killed and it brought about the fall of the Tower of Babel, maybe, or something. I, I thought I saw something Golbez, about that. I figured that Golbez and Fusoya were like, they just left and were like, yo, let's go kick Zeromus's ass. So I figured that they like went into the palace before us and the crystals uh, were like, yeah, we let those other two guys by. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so, hold on. So Fusoya I, there, and there was... Golbez, how they get there? Without the whale, they're uh, Lunarian. They're you know whatever. <laughs> they're Lunarian. Jedi mind tricks don't work. On them. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of a good point, fine. though. How the fuck did they get there? <laughs> oh well. Yeah, they took like I don't know. Maybe the giant had an escape pod that just went straight back to the moon. I don't know. <laughs> they right, gathered exactly. all seven Dragon Balls and wished to be back in the in the lunar core. Yeah. But um, but yeah, we're allowed to get back on the um on the lunar whale. And uh, this time, instead of immediately like being able to utilize it, we get a cutscene. Yeah, yeah, a very odd cutscene that we talked a little bit about before we started recording, and like it seems very out of place to me. It's it feels very shoehorned in. in yeah, ways. it's it, it seems very uncharacteristic of a lot of the characters as well, where they were just kind of like, well, we need a cool scene, like a cool action movie scene that happens. And it just kind of fell flat for me. I was just like, oh, everyone's yeah. sexist now? Okay. This is yeah. like, it's supposed to be like the moment before we go to like the northern crater to like finally do the big deed. And we're like, okay, we're all in this together. But instead, the cutscene is basically like, 
All right, guys, let's go. Ladies, you stay behind. We'll take care of this. Yeah, let the men handle it. Yeah, it's not yeah. so much like, hey, go, like this is a big deal that we're doing. Like, no one's asking you to do this. You can go and, you know, tie up any loose ends you have or just no one's going to judge you if you don't come along. It's nothing like that. They're just like, ladies, you stay here and the men are going to do it. Yeah, right, right. And Actually, like, but before that, we do have, uh, I mean, in the 3DS version, there is a little bit of a, a, a quick flashback. Oh, okay. uh, oh, cool. Involving Kane, uh, some, just some more Kane backstory. Like, I think this whole thing is just supposed to be kind of more character development. Kind of catch up. But yeah, like, the cutscene starts and, like, Kane is basically apologizing because, again, because his mind is his own. And I think the theory is that because Golbez is free... His grasp on Kane is also been <laughs> it's like a transitive property of mathematics. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the pyramid scheme has come falling, falling <laughs> down. <laughs> but we get a flashback, and I think it's uh, basically young Cecil and uh, young Kane just hanging out in the courtyard in Baron. It's like, Who are you? I'm Kane, Kane Highwind. My father is Sir Richard Highwind, the commander of the Dragoons. And Cecil's like, Pleased to meet you. And uh, Kane's like, don't think you can be friends with me just because the king treats you like you're special. And then they basically Whoa. get start getting like in a fight. And then Rosa, little baby Rosa, comes in too. It's like, stop it. Then Rosa quotes, uh, "Men of Baron fight not without just cause. That's what His Majesty taught us, isn't it?" It's like, but he's the one who started. Dragoons don't make excuses. Like, just <laughs> shut <laughs> down. Yeah, get fucked. Dork. It's establishing that Cecil is like the more kind of pure of heart. I think like he's he admits that he like started the fight and whatever. And uh, Kane says, see, it wasn't my fault. And then Rosa says, he, he, well, I guess it wasn't. And then, <laughs> yeah, we just, it, we we catch him up and was like, yeah, Golbez is Cecil's brother. Lunarian named Zemus is making use of Golbez as, as a means to control him. Yada, yada, yada. And then, yeah, then they're like, all right, Rosa, you and Rydia stay behind. Yeah, th this made me. This Let's made... go to the moon. But Rosa and Rydia stay behind. This time there may be no homecoming. This made I me hate. particularly pissed off because I just spent a lot of time level grinding Rydia to basically be my main in the same way that I had uh, <laughs> Yuna like my main. Yuna <laughs> Destroyer. Yeah. like, And I was, I was just like, are you fucking kidding? I was like, are they yeah, really going to. Yeah. Like, like this game's already taken away members of my party from me like countless times where I'm like, fuck, dude. This actually is kind of like a mechanic fake out because theoretically we are going to meet. Fusoya and, and Golbez. Golbez, yeah. So it's like, oh, you the like the player know that we can only have five members in the party at a time. So let's get rid of two. So like, yeah. whatever. So yeah, sure. But so we get, get rid of the one white mage. And, well, I guess Fusoya has white magic. So summoner. That, yeah, but, but he's yeah. not a white mage. We have forever summoner. So yeah, after grinding for Odin or whatever, you mm -hmm. it's worthless. I would have yeah. been fucking pissed, dude. Riddy is the best. <laughs> I know. And well, oh, Edge has a line that I specifically do not like in it it's very specifically do not like this He's, is work for grown-ups you just wait for us back here yeah yeah he says in in the version i'm reading he says be a good girl and stay home ew. yeah ew. oof you know edge don't like it not mm -hmm. you know what ever since we got this guy not not a big fan of edge yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna have a maybe a hot take fuck edge i don't like fuck this edge. dude he sucks <laughs> dude he's constantly fading uh, fainting i have to always use a fucking phoenix down or like waste dude, one of rose's valuable turns to get him fucking i i did this dungeon on stream and i cannot tell you how many times i said the phrase edge loves being dead he loves <laughs> that shit <laughs> <laughs> Like he has like, sucks. dude, no this, defense it's... whatsoever. Like his final weapons are like front row weapons, so he needs to stick up front so he can get hit. Yeah. And he just dies in one hit all yeah, the time. Yeah, he fucking Edge takes sucks. a hit like he should be in the back row, and he yeah. fucking can't be. <laughs> <laughs> Edge blows. Unless you give him the augment that lets him like reach farther, I guess that's true. You could we buy ninety nine in my game. He's just a shithead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm trying to think of like what his archetype would remind me of, and I think it's like maybe this is what like FF Seven Sid used to be like when he was a little shit. <laughs> sure, <Yeah. laughs> just way more like misogynistic. Yeah, do not do not not a fan of Edge. We do not stand an Edge. Yeah, I mean, I guess he he's like the thief class, right? So I guess it kind of works. I can't remember specifically how the thief and the ninja class worked in um in FF one, but maybe that maybe that lines up with it. But well, I mean, there's like Locke in FF six, who's not like a, the worst. He's he's not the best, but he's not the worst. 
Yeah, he it, it, more often than not, Edge feels like a fucking detriment to the party than an asset. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Fucking and edge. I'm like, and for me, I, like when, when I got to the tough parts of like what we're g- going up against here, I was like, fuck, dude, I could just go back to Mesidia. I can get literally anyone else. <laughs> like all of their levels are fucking stacked for some reason. <laughs> we got another prince we could grab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'll right, take a fucking right. Edward. Edward's got solve. Like, you know, I miss Edward. Yeah, <laughs> yeah comparatively. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. We were wrong, Ed. See, well, but, oh, you know what the other fucking thing I Edge, about? Edge has the fucking like alpha male mentality, and uh, yeah. and Edward is the, a solid Sigma. So you just gotta <laughs> get with the Sigma mindset. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say too, like when we get back to the um, to the whale, are we not on the Eblin continent? Uh, that's a good question. Because if we kick Rosa and Rydia off right now, how are they supposed to get home? Yeah. There's no <laughs> there's no ships on it or anything. I'm guessing there's plenty of people around because like our rest of our party is flying. But like, it's Eblin. Are there ship. plenty of people around? Like that city is destroyed. I feel like we just kicked them. Well, I'm talking about theoretically we just left the uh the army. We just left the we we just left the army, right? Yeah. The army can grab them. Maybe so, maybe so. I was just yeah, like still pretty shitty though. <laughs> yeah. I just imagine like, wait, yeah. Can, they kicked them off right and, like, back hold on. with Yang and everyone else. Yeah. Anyway, it's ridiculous, and we go back to the moon. and the, Just at the men, boys night. Just the boys, and the game lets us think that we do not have the girls on the party for all of ten seconds. Yeah. And it's like, oh man, they're not there anymore until literally the next scene, and it turns out that they were stowaways. But they were uh. stowaways on the outside of the ship, and we flew the ship through space, and I'm not sure how they survived. I don't know. It's weird. They're magic. If it's in real time, they could easily hold their breath. <laughs> if it's in real time, it's true. It is a very short little scene. Yeah, that's how space works, right? It's only that you can't breathe there. It's not that your your atoms like expand <laughs> to the point where you yeah, just explode, no, it's right? I'm pretty sure you'd be all right. Just bring look, if you're gonna be outside exposed to the vacuum of space, bring a sweater. Yep. Yeah. That's our advice. Um and they no. do, and immediately as soon as we try to get off the ship, Rose and Riddy appear and they're like, haha, we're actually here the whole time. And then Cecil and Edge and Kane are just all like, oh, okay, well, that's fine then. <laughs> no sense arguing with the woman is basically what they say. <laughs> they do, yeah. yeah. I think Cecil at one point's like, we're taking you back. And she's like, no, I'm coming with you. I don't care what happens as long as I'm with you, which is very sweet. Yeah. She shouldn't be this sweet. He's being a fucking dick. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Rydia says, I told you before, we have to confront this together. And besides, you'll need my help. And Cecil's just like, oh, yeah, you're right. So, like, I don't know what all that posturing was for. <laughs> like, they yeah, like, made a big deal weird. of it. Odd scene. Odd scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is where I realized that the Eidolons is pronounced Eidolons. Oh, that's of, right. Eidolons. We've only heard it twice in the VO. Like, once, I think, when Kane mentioned it briefly when we first met Rydia. And then right here where Rydia says, And having some Eidolons along can't hurt, can it? I was like, oh, that sounds way more elegant than Eidolons. 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 Yeah. <laughs> The Ida Johns, that's the ones you get in Philadelphia. What if, like, Philadelphia turned into a giant Eidolon? Like, um, it would be like Oscar the Grouch or Gritty, I guess. Get off my Eidolon. That's right. <laughs> idle <laughs> off and I, I, I idle off and idle on. That's good. Um, anyway, then we go back to the, um, the planet's core. The planet's <laughs> core. <laughs> The uh, the Crystal Palace, right? And like yeah. at this point, the Crystal Palace is the last dungeon in the game. This is the end of the game here. Really? It doesn't feel like that. <laughs> you mentioned the face on the moon. There is yeah. a bonus dungeon there in New Game Plus, I think. Yeah, in, in uh, certain versions, versions. Yeah. It's cool that they just like, oh, the face. You remember that thing? Now it's a dungeon. Uh, yeah, I like how that was just an homage to the face on Mars. And then they're like, oh, let's let's turn it on. A, let's turn it into a bonus dungeon. Do we want to do an episode on that or anything? I don't have it in my game, so I can't speak on it. We'll see where we are when we're at the end of this I think, game. Maybe. Yeah, I think okay. it's I think it's in my game. Um, after this dungeon, I'm kind of happy to just step away from this game for a while. <laughs> we can tuck it in with our potential after years discussion later. On yeah, like, sure. <laughs> All right, but yeah, if um if you're playing the older version of this game, then this is the final dungeon. There's there's nothing else to do after this. Uh, you can go get the rest of your summons. For instance, I went and got Odin, finally. Um, 
which I think I got Odin on the final turn. Like I used oh, Rydia. Nice. Rydia finally had Thundaga. I was able to hit Odin for quad nine. Still didn't take him out. And then had to do like another round of physical hits to be able to take him. And I was like, oh my god, I almost didn't get it still. So it was very close. But I did get Odin. And then somebody told me while I was streaming, don't you want to go back and get the other summons? And I said, other summons? What do you mean other summons? I think I have all of them. And I like opened my list up and they were like, yeah, you don't have like bomb. And I was like, yeah, fuck getting bomb. bomb. Yeah. And there are like three summons that you get just from beating normal enemies and they randomly drop them sometimes. Yeah. So I saw that in, in your SNES uh, playthrough when you were streaming, yeah. I saw that you had a summon for goblin and I was like, how the fuck did you get that? Yeah. And then I looked, I looked into it and I was like, Oh, that doesn't sound worth it. It's basically there's a, like a, a goblin bomb. You go to the goblin ranch and you give them some greens. They do a little dance. You have to <laughs> take them to gold some. saucer and race them. Um, I'm no, very excited but, to talk about the goblin today. Yeah, they they. Um, oh, yeah, me too. I'm very excited about that particular goblin. But yeah, there's a rare item that they can drop that will allow you to learn the summon, which is pretty cool. Right. Like. But I was like, I'm not going to fight these low-level goblins over and over again for hours to get a summon that I'll never use. Like, I think they use Goblin right, right. Punch, which is a, a staple of the Final Fantasy series, but... Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is the last dungeon. Um, once we go inside the Crystal Palace, uh, there's the the back room behind where we got Fusoya is a room with the eight crystals, right? Like, yeah, I think we talked there. about that before, yeah, where they, they kind yeah. of gave a little bit extra plot last right. time i think half of the them, canoe thing all over again yeah 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 ha half of them uh still say the same thing that they said before but the other the other half like just basically tell you like oh like fusoya and golbez went to you know oh, i didn't get that or whatever. Like, yeah it's nice, not really nice. anything super interesting they basically okay. I, I think they do say that the fall of the the giant of babel triggered something to open up the planet core okay or the, um, the moon core but yeah, we step. There's a tile in the center of the room. We step on that, and then we are transported to the lunar subterrane. Is that how you say that? I say terrain, but it's subterrane. Yeah, let's uh, let's. It has an. A I don't know how to do the, the Google Translate version. thing where you can have a cool. A cool oh wait, no, it doesn't have lady a say it. Subterrane. Google. You're right. Pronounce. It just has a single e. I thought it had an a. But it's spelled subterrane. Yeah. Instead of terrain. It's, oh yeah, subterrain. Let's yeah. see. It's a it's a misspelling Lunar. of subterranean. Yeah, I guess it would be subterrain, right? The moon submarine. We're in the Crystal Palace basement. We're in yes. the wine cellar. <laughs> this is the load bearing dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Fusoya's like, ah oh, yes, the uh the house that my arch nemesis lives in is a perfect place to live, like on top of <laughs> what could possibly go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like we go into we go into the uh, into the Crystal Palace basement. There's a, you know, there's like a stack of air conditioners down there that don't work. There's like some tables <laughs> up against the wall. <laughs> it's basically just where we used to record during the FF10. Um, That's right. Season where <laughs> there's uh, lots of flooding. <laughs> there's a dead rat <laughs> just under the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> That's there for months. <laughs> but the very first thing you'll notice about this area, as soon as you get into it, the fucking Red Wings theme. It's oh, back. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! As soon as as soon as it starts, just dun, 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 dun. I was like, "Oh my god, it is on! Let's do this thing." Love so a it. funny thing was happening when I was playing it. When I left the battle, the music would continue, but for some reason, all the instruments wouldn't kick in. So I just got this like one little trumpet going. <laughs> <laughs> the next bar, everything kicked in. It was just like, "Oh, that's kind of cute." And weird. Like, it just sound like <laughs> that's you're like, "Damn, I wonder what Nabuo was thinking when he uh, decided on on this." <laughs> I'm guessing it was just like a glitch in the emulation. Just like yeah. the voices were not kicking in. <laughs> or so I'm still loading good. samples That's or something. So I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, I you know what? I really like this dungeon. I think it's a great final dungeon. Um, it is very complex. Yeah, um, it, it, it's... It's complex. It's very... It, it can get very frustrating, but it's... I see. I, I remember, I, like, it's... it's The gravity of it is, it like, is fitting for what mm. we're coming up against. Because it's fucking massive. There's a lot of floors to yes. this fucking thing. I love how large it feels. It feels like a play area where you like... There's a lot to discover. There's a lot to explore. There's a lot of hidden things. And I love that there's... A lot of rewards? I was going to say, there's like no dead ends. There's huge rewards everywhere. So like, 
Yeah. Every hallway you go down is going to get you something amazing. There is, uh, there's in-game armor for every character. There's in-game weapons for every character. With uh, like mini bosses. All with their own individual mini bosses with their own strategies to beat. Mini in quotes. They're still hard as balls. It's true. But like there's so much to this area and I love it. It feels like a lot of work went into it. And that's what I really, really like about this area. Yeah, I think there's four or five bosses. Uh, maybe At least. six if you count the core. Yeah. There's... I, there's it's gonna be more than that. Probably yeah, not many more than but, that. Probably like maybe I don't know. We'll find out. We'll go through them now on the every F and FF podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me pull up. Uh, but the uh, the aesthetic of this place again is kind of just floating stalactites and weird dark tunnels everywhere. Yeah. Um, there are just huge monsters like uh, dino zombies. There's sages everywhere there, there's so many fucking enemies in this area you know it's cooler than a zombie you know it's cooler than a dinosaur dinosaur zombie little murderer okay okay on i don't want to get i want to i want to say save that save that for a little bit i want that to be yeah. a, a special one that we do in a minute <laughs> disney's the little murderer we need to give him his due a, we gotta give him his due put a pin in little murderer <laughs> for a second i want to come back to little murderer um Enemies. Okay. So there are some not that bad enemies, right? There's like the Dark Sage. That's fine. Not a big deal. Yeah, the, yeah. the Moon Maiden. The Moon Maiden. Which are like super cool, but yeah, they're not like too knights, difficult. Right. All these ladies. Uh the armored fiend is like a giant red Gundam. Love that guy. Oh god, yeah. yeah, he's he's rough. Oh god, the sprite in the 2D version rules. It rules. Yeah, it's, real it's cool. really good. Um, PSP version is very good. I, mm-hmm. I palette swap of armor construct in uh, other areas. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I didn't really fight these guys. I, I I didn't bother to do it, but I wonder if they work similarly. Where if you use lightning, it it fucks with them a bit. Uh, this guy, if you use a summon, he will fuck with you. Um, oh damn! So a lot of these enemies in this area have very interesting AI scripts. Like very very few of these battles are straightforward. I would say like the Dark Sage Mood Maiden fight is pretty straightforward. There's really not too much to that. They cast magic. They do physical, you know, attacks. They're kind of just making sure that you have your formation correct, I feel. Um, But the other ones are kind of more interesting. Like they have interesting AI scripts where like the Armored Fiend will react more severely if you try to use summons on it. The Silver and Gold Dragons. Very interesting. They, uh, They will counter with Entangle every time you do damage to them. Which is like a temporary paralysis. It only lasts for like a turn or two. But like you can end up having everybody paralyzed if you're just doing physical attacks the whole time. Very interesting. Yeah, a lot of these enemies take a lot more strategy than just like, oh, attack, attack, attack. Right, right. Um, okay, but yeah, let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about Lil Murder. I love Lil Murder. Um, in the one I was doing, he was called Little Killer. Because I think the uh, <laughs> Japanese is like Riru Kira, <laughs> so like Riru Mada. <laughs> I I know that like okay, it's it's not like rocket science or anything, but I was proud of myself for recognizing the danger. I was like, nah, I don't think so, buddy. Can't get me that so, easy, motherfucker. Yeah. So this is a um, a goblin with the float status on, right? So f- oh. for whatever reason, you also can't use Quake on it. Uh, whatever, it's floating. Um, and the only thing it does is cast scan or Libra on itself. Mm-hmm. And it just keeps showing you how much HP it has and that its weakness is lightning. And that's it. And I was like, no, 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 no. You will not get me to cast lightning on you. I know what you want. <laughs> yeah, that, that and, freaked me the fuck out. I was like, oh, my God. And it also has it like 12,000 uh, HP. So there's no way you're going to one shot it. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's trying to get you to use... Thundaga or something like that on it, right? Like, that's what it wants. Yeah. Um, and like you said, there's no way to one-shot it. So even if you did quad nines with a lightning strike, whatever comes next is still going to happen. And I thought maybe it would be like, it would transform into some boss that would kill me or whatever. I don't know. But um, it casts Thundaga back on you and a very, very strong Thundaga too, if yeah. you hit it with lightning. Um, but if you don't hit it with lightning, it doesn't do anything else. Yep. You can just sit there and wail on it for a while. Um, I saw when I was reading about it, it was like, actually, this is a great time to just use prey over and over and just like heal all the way up without having to waste your MP. And I was like, oh, that is a good time <laughs> to do. Yeah, that. I saw that strategy, too. And then I tried doing that and I was still only doing like 100 HP each time. It would take prayer, a long time. 
and I was like, "Fuck that! I'm not wasting my time. I'm not watching this dude scan himself over and over." Yeah. And one of the one of the strats is like, you stop on him, so it, you can do it even faster because you won't have to watch his scan animation. Right, right. He keeps analyzing himself. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you get older, you do have to analyze yourself for you know certain things. Just to it's true. Make sure oh, he can know. actually drop Goblin, which is interesting. Oh, okay. It is a 0.39% chance for him to drop that <laughs> item that allows you to summon Goblin. Rock Goblin. You summon Goblin and it just stands there and casts a Libra on itself. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. Libras, am I right? I, was, I thought you were going to say it starts playing a song by the band Goblin. I was like, fuck <laughs> yeah. I wish. Um, Shout out to Necrogoblicon. <laughs> so like you were saying uh, uh, earlier, there's, there's some bosses here. And the reason I thought that there were like a billion bosses is that a lot of these treasure chests are guarded by Behemoth. And Behemoth yeah. feels like a fucking boss to me. Although but we Behemoth have was a boss them. in a previous dungeon. Like we would just walk on a tile where there was Behemoth and we would have to fight yeah. it. We couldn't run. Getting Bahamut. Yeah, there was a few mandatory Behemoth encounters. Yeah. Yeah. Do we talk about the uh, strategy for those? Um, yeah. Uh, my strategy was to use uh, the Ninjutsu. Oh, oh, uh, Mirage. Shadowbind? Shadowbind? Shadowbind is what I use, which it'll, like, basically just freeze it for almost five t cycles. You can oh, just okay. completely wail on it without it. Oh, nice. That's what it's oh, just okay. good for, I think, is just stopping behemoths from killing you. Yeah, I my you. my strat was much dumber, which was just like, okay, if I hit him once, he'll hit me once, so I can regulate that with healing. <laughs> and oh, okay, I just, okay. like, yeah, like, one for one. I was like, I can... I was trying to say, like, it's like the Homer Simpson approach to boxing, but Homer doesn't really attack back. He just waits until they tie <laughs> themselves out completely. Nudge him, nudge him. <laughs> but I, I ended up using the blink strategy where you cast blink and use mirage with um, edge. And uh, it's pretty much 100% like the behemoth cannot hit a character who has blink status activated. Nice. So it'll always miss. Um, so that's what I did for those battles. Um, whatever. It ended up being fine. It just took a long time, but... You know, you get through them, uh, but they um, they guard every chest, I believe, that has dragon equipment in it, which mm -hmm. is oh, that um, makes sense. the best armor for Kane. And it also is armor for Cecil, but Cecil can get a better armor as well, uh, yeah. which is also in this area. The crystal armor, crystal armor. Hell yeah. So Kane and uh, Cecil decked out in the finery. I forget what the dragon, uh, like the special attribute of the dragon armor is. I think crystal it protects against undead attacks. I think dragon might protect against like ice, fire, and uh, the other one. <laughs> I will tell you momentarily. And thunder. Uh, it does. Uh, dragon mail is resistant against fire, ice, and lightning. And then crystal mail, it prevents various status ailments. Indeed. Oh, so that's, that's cool. interesting. That makes sense, too, because, like, I kept getting certain casts by enemies that should do statuses and then just nothing happened on screen. Because, like, in the Super Nintendo version, if they target, like, Cecil, right, who has some equipment that doesn't allow a status to go off, it doesn't show you the animation and then, like, a little word that says, like, miss or null, just nothing happens. And so you're like, oh, I guess they didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> And that actually makes sense, too, because sometimes they would cast, like, Thunder, and I wouldn't see anything happen. But that's probably because they were aiming at Kane. So that would make sense. Yeah, it's good armor, Another though. Item, it's good shit. Yeah. Another item uh, that Behemoth was guarding was the Stardust Rod, a.k.a. Stardust. What does that do? It is infused with the power of the stars. Um, does that, like, cast Comet it, or something? Yeah, it can cost. It can cast comment when used as an item. Oh, okay, but it's but it's cool plus fifteen idea. intelligence, which I'm sure applies to some stat. I'm not 100 percent sure with. It probably um, increases magic on Rydia or whoever can equip it. I guess it is the besides the Ezra's rod is the second strongest rod in the game. Mm. Forty five attack, ten magic. I did not find magical attack to be super super useful in the last dungeon uh, mm. or on the last boss for the reason yeah. that. It seemed like it either did not do as much damage. I needed the characters to be doing something else or a lot of these bosses just counter that stuff. Yeah. And so it kind of like teaches you like, hey, hey, don't use that. And I was like, OK, I guess I won't then. So at least that's how it felt to me. Yeah, I think on some of it, like you can use Quake because a, a lot of the bosses will I did use, use Quake Reflect. A lot. So if you use Quake, that might help. 
boost that a little bit. But yeah, I mean, Quake does go through reflect, indeed. I don't even think I equipped the uh, the Stardust rod. I definitely did not. I think I sold it. Honestly, I think I was yeah. like, nah. <laughs> the uh, other reward is in one of these chests is the Artemis bow, which fucking whips, dude. That thing's yeah. awesome. That is the yeah, best bow in the game. These are the strongest weapons, except for ones that you find in the optional dungeon, which we will yeah. not talk about today. Um, but yeah, that this thing, that thing looks like it rules. It also looks like you can get it as a drop as well. Hmm. That's interesting. I would say Rydia's best weapon is the fire whip. I mean, obviously she can use uh, bows as well, so you could give her like the Yoichi bow or something like that after mm-hmm. uh, somebody else. Like I guess Rosa uses the Artemis, but like I liked using the whip with her. I thought it was cool as hell. What's not cool about using a whip? That shit's sick. It's made yeah, of fire. Yeah, I think it also has a good. What does the uh, the fire whip do? Does that also cause uh, paralysis? Let us find out. Because I feel like it did some sort of status uh, thing when I used it, and I was like. Fuck yeah. Yeah, 30 cents, uh, 30 cents, 30% chance of uh, inflicting paralyze, indeed. Yeah, th- that was pretty surprising. For the most part, I don't attack with Rydia because, you know, she can summon and has yeah. great black magic, but. Yeah. I thought it was still cool to use. Like, so I used that. Yeah, uh, no, like I, I, said, I definitely put that on uh, on Rydia as well. So I'm a dingus, and like, it, it took me to this dungeon to realize that Rydia has an extra hand to equip something. What can I give her? <laughs> Besides a whip. I think that's, um, no, that's usually if you have a bow equip, the other one oh. would be the arrows. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say the Artemis bow, and later on we can also get some Artemis arrows. Yep. That is really, really good on Rosa. She can deal a lot of damage if she uses aim. Yo, I don't know oh. if you all noticed this or not. Have you noticed that targeting mage-type enemies with the silencing arrows does a fuckload of damage? Oh, I did not. So I've had the silencing arrows on because I bought a shitload of them before we went into the um, the Fey March because like they were available. They were there and they were like relatively cheap. So I bought 99 of them and I've been using them the whole game. And when we come up against those like sages, she'll do like three to four thousand damage with those that arrows. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like what? she's so strong. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, Rose is surprisingly strong. It, it's really cool. So I guess we should talk about some of these uh, special items locked behind bosses. Yeah. All right. Throughout the this dungeon, there are these like pedestals, right? Yeah. With a weapon kind of floating on it, or if in the three D version, you actually could see it, but I think in the two D version, it's just a pedestal. Yeah, it's it's a pedestal with the with a weapon on it. Yeah, and yeah, it's very compelling. Weapon. Like you walk it's past it, and you're like, "Yo, I want that fucking sword. Let me get yeah. over there." Yeah. They they're all on these pedestals. They're they're always like surrounded by columns. So they 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 look very proper, you know what I mean? It, it's clear there's some reverence put on these items, and so of course y- you want them, right? <laughs> yeah. The first one I come across is one called the Murasame. Murasame, yes. Me so too. that's not the the first one that you can come a- across. Um, the thing is about this dungeon, it's I don't want to say it's non-linear because there is one way that's correct to the end, but there are several routes to take. So yeah. like, what what? Uh, order you find things in and what order we found things in will probably not be the same just depending on which direction you choose to take first. So this is likely the first one that you'll see and want to get. Yeah, probably so. Um, but yeah, the Mira- Murasame after defeating well, let's talk before we uh, before defeating, when you walk up to it, you'll get these various little messages, right? Like, oh you want this sword? Well, it's my job to keep anybody from taking it and various things like that, right? Yeah. And uh, this one is uh, defended by the white dragon which is like the mist dragon, right? Yeah. It looks exactly like the mist dragon. Oh yeah. <laughs> For some reason I thought Leviathan, but it's actually is like the white dragon I think because... Yeah, it's just the mist dragon I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yep. It's interesting because after we defeat this uh the thought bubble in the menu for Rydia is like, why did mother attack or something like that? Like, why did my mother attack uh, Cecil? Oh, really? It was interesting. Wow. I did, that's cool. All right. That's so it is supposed to be that. Yeah. Fantastic. I was wondering if they were just reusing the sprite or if there was some like significance to that. Yeah, I think they, they kind of, that sort of follows a theme as well. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I was just like, this is a, another test you need to pass. I feel like this fight is the most straightforward of these bosses, maybe. Well, yeah, I don't even really remember this fight. Honestly, it was pretty much just win. 
Yeah, it so it counters everything that you do to it. Um, physical attacks are countered with slow, and magical attacks are countered with earthquake. Um, obviously, earthquake you can cast float and just get over it, and then just go to town with magical attacks. And then it also has its own strong physical attack and can use maelstrom that reduces your HP to single oh, digits. Yeah, yeah. But meh, you know, don't get maelstromed and then use magic, and yeah, you're fine. Just just use float, and you're fine. <laughs> Yeah, either way, it's fine. Yeah, so it's not not too bad. This, this is not too bad of a um, uh, boss. Um, and on the wiki, it mentions I think our next bounties are in B five. Yeah, which is where the Flan Princess room is, where we can get that rainbow jelly. Get that if we rainbow want. pudding. I did not that, even go for it. <laughs> Maybe I will for pud. next week, but yeah. Now I'm thinking if I might want to try that just to see what uh pudding way will become next yeah yeah we should do that before we do the uh the final stuff next week we should we need to put a cap on on the on mr naming ways that's right now even though i think there's like five more names that you can go through <laughs> now uh not just um the pudding but uh they also drop the pink tail as well um Ooh. there's a 1 64th chance of them dropping it so you could just that's run around in this room forever. Too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad of a chance. It's not too bad of a drop. But the problem is that they're a, an extremely rare enemy. Yeah, they're also a rare enemy. So it's it's rare that you get them, but you can summon them with a siren. I believe the siren. Yeah. Item you now, where do you get them. sirens? Because I think I had a couple, and I was like, I'm never going to use this shit, and I needed space in my inventory, <laughs> so I just threw it out. You may be able to buy them in the PSP version. I'm not sure. I don't think so in the SNES version, but you can get them from enemies. Uh, you can steal them. I think usually they they show up in um like if you find them as a random encounter, they show up in, in a group of five. I want to say that's correct, but. If you use Siren, they only show up in a group of three. Oh, I did not know that. Um, which, if you do get the pink tail, you can take that back to the um, the tail trader. The tail guy? The ta- tail fetishist? The tail fetishist. The tail man. Uh, and he'll give you the adamantite, which then you can take to uh, the blacksmith, and he will produce you some adamant armor. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. Which I think that's the best armor in the game, right? Yeah, it's like a super OP armor. Yeah. It like kind of makes Cecil unkillable. Actually, it may make anybody unkillable. See here. Who is it for? Anybody can equip it. Good for them. So let's just uh, for for comparison, for a comparison, uh, Cecil's crystal mail has 25 defense on it. And the adamant armor has 100. So it is four Holy times shit. stronger than his strongest armor. So you put Adam and armor on somebody and they live. That's just how it goes. Like that person will now live through things. So it kind of kicks ass. Kind of makes you wonder about the blacksmith. So he has the ability to make armor like that to, yeah. you know, make the world not end in a much <laughs> easier way. Yet he's kind of just not doing that until he can be bothered. Something- yeah, until someone gives them something that he wants. Why don't they just make the the whole plane out of black box? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we talked about the white dragon boss. There's a couple more bosses as well. I was gonna say, do y'all want to take like a quick break before we hit some of the other bosses? I think we should probably yeah. take a quick break before this next one coming up, which is on the same yeah. floor. Um, because this next one's kind of a doozy. Kind of nasty. Kind of nasty. Kind of gross. A little nasty with it. Mm-hmm. Pretty kind of toxic, not going to lie. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. On the uh, on the last floor, there is a save point. So let's pretend that we've made it all the way. Yeah, so we went B8, all the way. We did what I did. We did what I did. And we saw this shiny sword on this cool pedestal off in the distance. We're like, yo, I want to see what that shit's about. And then we continued on because we came too far into this dungeon and we're terrified of dying in it. And we're yep. trying to find a save point. And yep. then we go to Google.com and look up a map of the area to make sure that there is, in fact, a save point here. And we find out it's on the seventh floor in the first door that you can walk into. Yep. <laughs> so let's uh, use a quick cottage and uh, we'll return shortly. Yeah, pitch a pitch a cottage. <laughs> Yeah. 
The red dragons suck, and I hate Dude, them. fuck the red dragons. Along with the blue dragons. I don't like those ones very much either. The blue dragons... Don't care for the dragons. Yeah, the blue dungeon. dragons suck. They're not as bad. They feel like they're easier to escape from, which was my main <laughs> move in this dungeon, was just like, ah, oh, fuck, run away. And then I was like, wait, I can do this faster by using teleport with Cecil, or uh, smoke with edge, because... Facts and logic. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> fuck fighting in this dungeon. It's not Wait, is that it. what smoke with edge does? Yeah, it's just, it's just like teleport, smoke screen, pocket sand. What? And, and here I throw been some ver- smoke in their eyes and using my legs like a sucker. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm always casting that because Edge has higher speed than pretty much anyone else in my party, so he always gets the smoke in first before anyone can get warp or teleport out. Yeah, I'm trying oh. to get a smoke in. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just smoking all over this fucking uh dungeon. Especially hey. later, there's some boss like there's some enemies that you encounter where it's like it takes a while to run away. Never to the point yeah. where you're in any kind of immediate danger necessarily, but I didn't feel like waiting. This is a long fucking dungeon. Easily long the dungeon. longest dungeon in the game, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Certainly the most complex. Yeah, so I was um, like, fuck that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run. So what's the uh what's the item y'all got next? Um, I think Carl was going to talk about the Ragnarok. This is the last one that I got. My favorite airship. I understand why this is the last one you got. That's the next one. It's also the last one that I got, but it's the next one I wanted to talk about. Just yeah. because there's a hidden path, which we... There's a hidden path! Which we've known about for the entirety of the game. You can usually tell, like, in this area specifically, there's, in my version of it, there's little... Um, indicators kind of where you can see like oh it looks like the tile on the floor is a little different it looks like indented a, a bit so i can go through and i i know how to make my way into like into the cave areas that i can't necessarily see where these paths are uh this one is just you float across a fucking cliff yeah you're just supposed to know that that's fine you just towards the west of it just walk across the cliff wow and then uh yeah you can make your way over to a couple caves walk around a bit and then another save point Yeah, very true. Another save point. Very important because this next battle is a fucking doozy. This is probably the hardest of all of these um, these little side battles, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt, because it is being guarded by Dark Bahamut. Dark Bahamut, or as it's abbreviated in my game, DK Bahamut. So as I was fighting him on the stream, everybody, yeah, everybody kept being much. like, yo, does he's that stand for Dick Bahamut? Because he's acting like one. You so. know him well. <laughs> he's finally back. And I said something. Or, I, I, spell. Oh, I remember what I said earlier. I, I made this exact joke earlier before we started recording, and I was like, oh, I'll do it again, and it'll be funny. And then I completely forgot it. But I was going to say, <laughs> he's finally back to use Mega Flare. Ugh. <laughs> Not working. And he does. He opens oh, he does. with <laughs> fucking Mega Flare. <laughs> mega yeah, he's got flare. a whole he's got a whole like uh, battle AI that I I think I just looked up and I I don't fucking care. I I use the internet to figure out how to beat this guy. Who cares? What a nerd. Um yeah, if you use summons against him, he will cast uh Mega Flare in retaliation. Yeah. Otherwise, he'll just he's reflected, so you can't use um any black magic on him. Right. But he'll only cast Flare on himself to hit you. And then when he runs out of Reflect, he'll use Heal, which does like 6,000, um, in my yeah. version, 6,000 HP to, you know, kind of fill the gap. But you're di- you're dishing out way more than that by the time he can use Heal. So it's not really that big of a deal. But I think that does like 10% of his max HP. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah. so he's got like 60,000. The problem with me was that I was I was outpacing his Heal. But only just barely. Damn, yeah. <laughs> like, I was maybe doing, like, 10k in between that amount of time. So I was basically doing, like, 4,000 per cycle. And so, like, this battle took me a long fucking time. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's basically just kind of like a, you know, like an MP or a Phoenix Down check where, you know, if, yeah. you're, uh, if, if, if you're casting Kiraja a bunch on your whole party it's not really going to be too much of a an issue or if you're just regularly using phoenix downs to keep everyone kind of topped off and using your attackers to to take them down you know that's kind of the strategy that i found to work but this was only after i made it all the way through the entire dungeon 
Because when I found yeah. this, I was like, fuck this place. Like, I just want to get through it. I'll go back for the loot later. I was kind of treating this like a dungeon crawler. I was like, let me find the save point. Then I can maybe go back and find all the shit that I'm missing. And then I made it to the final boss and was just getting absolutely decimated. And like in my first fight against the final boss, I got knocked out and I was like, fuck and, or again. like rosa got knocked <laughs> out and i was like okay let me just use a phoenix down and i had no phoenix down on me. <laughs> so i had to use teleport after game overing i had to use teleport and then i had to walk back to the fucking lunar well which is through like five goddamn caves yep, and then i yep. had to take the lunar well down to earth and then i had to go to a fucking shop and just buy 99 phoenix downs <laughs> or you could have taken it to the uh the naming way cave Oh yeah, I guess I could have. I haven't been there yet in uh, in my game. That's where I've been doing all my shopping at. Damn, let me see. That would be slightly easier. <laughs> that would be one uh, like one crystal touch away. Come on down to humming ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, yeah, one crystal touch and a little cutscene. Like, <laughs> yeah. Look, I got place. I got things to do and places to be. That yeah, I've had a little busy fucking touch. week. <laughs> like, yeah. that would have helped. I will say that you can cast um, Quake on Dark Bahamut without yeah uh, any yeah it doesn't reflect right it doesn't reflect um, but isn't he flying yeah it's kind of a gray area <laughs> yeah and this is like the opposite of FF nine in that like anything that doesn't touch the ground is a bird in FF nine <laughs> and like only things explicitly currently flying right now in FF four are birds so like birds standing on the ground not a bird. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a car flightless <laughs> bird not a bird it's a car <laughs> <laughs> does that mean that ju if you jump for a few short seconds you are a bird yes hell yeah <laughs> it does to me because like quake won't hurt you if kane's in the air um a lot of shit won't hurt kane if he's in the air that's true pretty much he's, he's got my you. favorite move in pokemon jump fly <laughs> Fly. Okay, thank you. I was like, <laughs> it's literally the same move, just a different name. <laughs> I was like thinking about. It's like, wait. Oh, you mean you mean air dig? I understand. <laughs> <laughs> dig up, stupid. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, this it, it's a tough. Dick fight. Bahamut sucks. Dick Bahamut sucks. Doug Bahamut. His coconut <laughs> guns do fire in spurts. <laughs> but you do get the Ragnarok for this battle. Which to me, I was like, oh, this is probably going to suck because I feel like with all of the circumstances surrounding getting Excalibur, like yeah. Excalibur would be the final weapon, like the additional, like optional final weapon that's better. No, Ragnarok's so much fucking better Dude, than Excalibur. So I'm like, why did I even fucking it. bother? <laughs> yeah, it, it smokes it. The Ragnarok is so much I just much better. immediately gave the fucking Excalibur the mythical sword with, you know, the Mycidian legend engraved on it and the side quest that I had. I just gave it to Edge to fucking huck it like yep, a, yep. a fucking little murderer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Toy Story Woody meme. I don't want to play with you anymore. Just drop it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so good. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's Dark Bahamut. Um, Dark Aeons ain't nothing. Ain't yeah. nothing. Um, so toward the end of this area, a lot of the, a lot of the caverns that we lead down get those pieces of armor. Like most of the treasures lead to those pieces of armor. So. That's pretty much everything until we get to that like last save point we were talking about, like on the uh, I think like the seventh floor base, seventh floor basement, basement seven. Along that hallway where that uh, save point is, there are two more doors, right? Like two identical doors to the save point door, and this uh, is the three door conundrum. The three door conundrum. This is the Monty Hall problem right here. Um, so. Monty Hall is taking out the first one. Except within two of those doors, there's also two chests. So it's just even... It's that, doors true. We, have, we have a really good chance of getting something good here. Uh, but the first one, or the, the middle door, is an item guarded by the Plague Horror. Oof. The Plague Horror. H horror. How horror. do you all feel about the Plague Horror? I'm curious. Uh, Not great. It's Mike Wazowski. It is Mike Wazowski. It's uh, a green one. So yeah, this is a, uh, a just a, a buffed up version um, and a reskin of the Ari Man, I think is how it, it's pronounced. Yeah, yeah. which is uh, you know the big eye enemy that we've seen in tons of Final Fantasy games before, like the evil eye, one eyed, one horn, flying purple people <laughs> Cecil <here>. Eater. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But uh, and and like there's army men in in on the army way men. leading up to here. Yeah, there's a bunch of army men. Um, they're not too difficult. They cast uh, doom on you one at a time, and it uh, you know, it, it's basically just, it, like a, a nice thing about it, it with the army man. Just to kind of talk about them a little bit, if. A character already has a doom countdown on them and it casts doom on them again. It resets at 10. It doesn't yes. just miss them. So like it kind of became a thing where I could always win that fight, but it didn't really seem worth the time investment. So I would just use smoke to get away from it. Um, but then I found the plague horror and yes. the first thing it fucking does is cast doom on you and everyone in your party has 10 seconds to finish the fight. Everyone. Or, or ten, 10 moves, I guess, right? It's no, I think seconds. It's, it's, it's like ten, it's like the seconds according ten to the ATV. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. So it's... Oh, weird. It's, it's uh, real harsh. I, I panicked and I just kind of went into mode of like, okay, I just need to kill this thing fucking fast. I did no strategy. I, I game over to it once and then I just like dumped everything I could at it all at once and like didn't even think of like, okay, how can I like reason my, how can I use facts and logic to uh, get out of this situation? <laughs> And I, I think I have a picture of it here that I can send you guys where I finished the fight with Kane as the only one alive. Oh my because god. Because he had jumped in the air and he like he, he killed him with a jump, and then it's just Kane standing there with his big zero over his head. Oh my like, god. Like, like, like little last like second <laughs> last frame, I fucking killed Barely him. Made it. And it was it was kind of fitting because once you kill him, you get the uh the holy lance, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, maybe that's like the intended way. Maybe jump kind of stops Jumping. the, yeah, maybe it, it stops the timer a little bit. So it gives you the edge. So it, it felt like thematically fitting that this is what Kane had to do to get his ultimate weapon. Fair. And then I realized there's a much easier way you can deal with this. Is that. How did you, how did you deal with this fight? I was going to say the way I dealt with it was. So as we've said multiple times this episode, Edge loves being dead. Like, he <laughs> loves that shit. He loves having zero HP. So it was very, very easy for me to have Cecil kill Edge immediately and mm -hmm. just like one hit him and then revive him. And if one person does not have Doom, the Plague Horror will recast Doom on everyone, resetting yep. everybody's Doom to 10. And then you just so like Cecil is on Edge killing duty. <laughs> and then everybody else can attack <laughs> but just every turn edge must die and like I, I picked edge because he just was so good at dying yeah but i feel like course. this would be a good like if this was ff10 this would be a good like xp just grinding thing is like the don tomberry thing all over again yeah, Actually, this, is yeah, the, yeah. Uh, this this area feels very much what like was that enemy call that we had to fight a whole bunch in ff10 the something eye the floating eye was it floating eye? Was no, I can't remember what it was called, but I know it, it, it's the same exact or, enemy. Or one eye. Yeah. One eye. As him. But yeah, I'm seeing in the wiki that you, if you're fast enough, you can cast reflect on a party member, oh, so damn. it just dooms itself. Oh no, shit, shit! Really? Really? Yeah. I was trying to plan it where because I think because Edge's speed was faster, his timer was going down faster. That I was just trying to like queue up a Phoenix down. Uh, like, so as soon as he died, he would just be I revived see. as soon as the counter came around to Rosa's turn. But at the end of the fight, Rosa was the only one living somehow. I think someone landed the killing blow and then died. You nice. know what's funny is that the plague horror will cast haste on you so that your timer will go down faster. But it doesn't actually make your timer go so, down faster. Yeah, so. the interesting thing about that is I think they literally just threw that in there because they're like, it's a little too difficult if we don't do that. Like, it's um, nigh impossible yeah. if we don't do that unless you know the strat. Like, they didn't go full Final Fantasy X Monster Arena for this. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's basically just to give you the edge because it doesn't Well, slow. you know what's funny? Both it, slow and haste do not change the, uh, yeah. the, the timer whatsoever. Well, you know what's funny is that, like, it gives you a little bit of an edge... But if you don't know, it scares the shit out of you because you're yeah. like, oh, my God, I'm going to die faster. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I still have fucking like uh, I, I'm still like looking over my shoulder for like Final Fantasy 10 optional bosses. So when I saw that, shit, <laughs> I was like, I just lose, dude. <laughs> this thing's nasty. But that's it's a neat little fight. So, yeah, I really like this one. This was fun. Yeah, not too bad. Three. You can uh, also you can cast um stop on someone too. Like one of the yes, strategies that actually mentioned does is like you cast stop on Rosa. It'll stop her from from dying so that when that runs out, she can then revive the whole party. Because I don't think right. it, it it doesn't actually attack you at all. No, no. Um, it's cool. 
Yeah, 33,000 HP. It's about what you have to do to beat him. Uh, like you were saying, you get the Holy Lance. Yeah, the Holy oh, Lance, yeah. which is really cool. It has a special little uh, thing about it that I didn't realize at first. Oh, yeah? That's for Kane, it, right? Yeah, it's for Kane. And if you use it as an item, it'll cast Holy. Nice. nice. Which I have I not learned that. with Rosa yet because I'm not high enough level. But it's also Did Kane I ever using learn it. Holy with Rosa? I may have beaten the game without learning it. It's uh, it, it it's Kane using it, so it's not very powerful. I think when I used yeah. it, I did like eight 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 damage to something, and I was like, oh. But I did stop Meteor, which was pretty cool. So what's behind door number three? <laughs> I got it. It took me a second. Uh, <laughs> behind door number three, uh, it in the version that I played, it literally tells you when you walk into the room what is in door number three because a disembodied yeah, voice speaks to you and says you're not allowed to touch these ribbons. And I was like, oh, the ribbons, fantastic. Yeah. Um, this. Is this the first instance of a ribbon that you guys have seen in this game? The no. No, I have a wait. I don't think so. Maybe it is. The reason that I ask is because I got a rare drop of a ribbon earlier in this dungeon from one of like the the moon mages or whatever. What what are they called? Moon maiden. Maybe. Is that the like sorceress one? I think the moon maiden yeah. is the soldier, right? Uh maybe. It's the uh you know the the swamp yeah. woman or whatever that we fought a bunch of times. Yeah, the witchy the one. toads, the toad woman. I was gonna say the bog witch. Yeah, the bog witch. Yeah, it's her, it's the moon variant of uh, the bog witch. Uh, she can drop a ribbon, and then I started trying to steal ribbons from her uh, with Kane. You cannot steal them. You just steal okay. like maiden. You steal maiden's kiss, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that shit anymore. So these are guarded by a pair of lunasaurs. And I yeah, do these things. What do you think about these things? I thought they were just kind of like another enemy, but stronger. They, well, that's exactly what they were, but they still okay. were able to get me to game over once. They were rough. They're, oh, really? they're tough. Over here, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they cast reflect on themselves and they like, yeah, they, I forgot what they did. They're like conservatives uh, with the joke about like what they identify as like this dungeon has one move this dungeon has <laughs> one joke and it's just cast reflect on yourself it was rough um <laughs> in a 3d version it opens with there's only one lunasaur but it opens with bad breath so everyone just kind of was oh frog no pegged, oh pegged miniatured and like poisoned and i don't like use bad rough. breath on me but i don't think it really affected anyone mm. but i had Almost the entire party just dead. There was a bunch of dead frogs. Oh, my God. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> the thing I found, so this battle wasn't too tough for me, but the thing was that I was just using Bahamut over and over and over. Well, you think you're better than me? Yeah, but not for this reason. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, no, Bahamut is definitely the move if you have them. Yeah, because they they only have um, 23,000 um, HP. So with constant Bahamut cast, they go down pretty fast. Nice. Because Bahamut can do like in the 3D version, it is one guy is one Lunasaur with forty six thousand. So ah, okay, damn. So it's a little trickier. Yeah, I, maybe this is one game over it on. Yeah, yeah, I don't. It, it definitely seemed like that one of like they had way more HP because I was just kind of focusing on one at a time, like casting Bahamut and then having Kane, Cecil, and, and Edge just attack the one. And it took a while to get down, and I was I was very close to getting a game over. But once I killed the one, then it was just like okay, I win. I didn't know this at the time, but somebody did tell me this, that if you already have Cecil having a weapon with uh, Holy on it, and I didn't have the Ragnarok yet, um, or you cast Holy, you can do quad nine damage every turn to them. Makes sense. Makes makes sense. So. I, I was wondering that, too. In the three version, uh, you can use Elixirs, cast quad nine. Oh, okay, oh, cool. Nice. But it's very tricky because everyone was confused and everyone was just killing each other. <laughs> <laughs> it was a breath. frog massacre. They were all just punching each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was a doozy. Massacre. You know who never lets me down? Never Rick, once has let me down. Rick Astley. And never will. Well, true. Never could. Um, <laughs> Yoshitaka Amano. Oh. Never let me down because I was looking. Post it like, in the thing. Real cool looking sprite. And I was like, you know what? I bet the concept art for this is fucking sick. And it really is. It's like, gotcha. yeah, dude, that, look at that. That's sick as fuck. Tattoo that on me. It, yeah, like, Ooh, I'm, I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, damn, dude, a sleeve of, like, Amino art would be so fucking cool. You would have to get a good tattoo artist to, to do yeah. it justice, but... But I love the kind of Japanese-style thing where it is a, a bone ghost, but it has these, like, purple wisps kind of floating around it. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
a lot of... I like to imagine that's how I appear to people, too, with just some purple wisps floating yeah. around me. Those are Gasly's. <laughs> Rick Gasly. Rick Gasly. <laughs> <laughs> Brought it home. <laughs> all right. So that is all to the Lunar Subterran. And then there is another area after the Lunar Subterran that's yeah. even cooler. And also the, even worse. <laughs> the Simultaneously Planet cooler, Core. worse, and better. <laughs> what could be worse? What could be better than the sub... No, no, yeah, now we're in the... Are we in the basement of Fusoya's castle or the attic of Zemus's <laughs> castle? We're in the uh, we're in Frank Grimes' apartment. We're in we're in <laughs> we're above a bowling alley and below another bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the lunar core, uh, and the music goes back to being within the giant. So like yeah, one the cool, like fucking weird one two little... punch. Oh, yeah, so I good. love it. Fucking wow. Red Wings theme in the subterrain. And then the within the giant for the last area in the game. Love it. Love real, it. Real strong. Real strong. Way to go, Nabuo. Way to Big go. Big FF7 energy because in the background on in the at least in the 3D version, there's like a big glowing core in the backdrop. Like we sure are kind of is. almost to the center of the planet. I have been told to look up the backdrop for every version of the game because people have told me that the backdrop is cool in every version. I'm like, oh my god. The I one really in my version literally looks like it just has like like the, the lens flare, like the core thing. Kind of just looks like the sun that Solaire drew on his armor from Dark Souls. Uh, and I love that, dude. Somebody told me that the um, the Pixel remaster has a fantastic one. But I haven't seen it, so I'm going to look up right now. Yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, some. Uh, <laughs> This game isn't super SEO friendly because anytime I look up anything and type in like FF4 with like the Roman numerals, I always get like, oh, here's Zero Mess from fucking Final Fantasy 14. I'm like, I don't want that. Get out of here. I don't need that. Final, yeah, Final Fantasy 14 has ruins <laughs> like every so, Final yeah, Fantasy. Yeah, being able SEO. to easily find Final Fantasy shit. Yeah. Not complaining. Yeah, the- I mean, that's apparently one of the greatest Final Fantasy games of all time. So, really good. But yeah, the um, so we're walking on like the the glass crystal tiles from the various crystal rooms throughout the game. But maybe um, this is where all they come from. Yeah, this is where they maybe? export these. Yeah, yeah, this is where the dark elf goes to get them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he swings by the moon every time. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, hey, that's right. God, remember how much simpler life was when we just had to fight a fucking dark elf? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. It makes me a little yeah. nostalgic. What is that guy's up to? Me too. Ed, Ed is still not calling on the whisper weed. Uh, I guess we don't get reception up here on the moon. Um, but yeah, we're walking <laughs> on those crystal tiles. There's no walls to this area. It's just no it, guardrails. There's no guardrails. It's just expanse. And you can just see the core of the moon in the background, right? Like, it's yeah. amazing. It's it, real it's, cool looking. It's real cool. It really says final area. Game mechanic wise, not always great because there is like, it's kind of hard to read where you're going sometimes where there's like, there's like a staircase and it like one of the tiles looks like it's the same tile as like a block that you can't walk past, but it's like the one tile path that you have to go to get through. But it's also so small that it's just like, that's just me being nitpicky. Like it, it didn't actually throw me off or anything. I was just like, oh, I don't think I can go that way. And then I was like, oh, I have to go that way. And then I was like, oh, okay. Ah. Like it's small enough. It's small enough that it, it doesn't actually cause a problem. I just wanted to yeah. mention it. There's a lot of uh, those Fuma Shurukens down here. Should it yeah. count? Uh, mm-hmm. um, the real strong ones. I think there's three in various uh, treasure chests. So that's huge for the uh, final boss coming up. So the first enemy I encountered as soon as I stepped down here, which things get real weird. Things get real weird. The death mask. Oh my god, yeah, dude. Yep. It's just a fucking cyborg, like, Akira-ass looking giant head. Love, yeah, it's, love it's Death very, Mask. Yo, Death Mask, Amino. Come on, let's for see. For cutie. <laughs> oh, death, death Mask, mask. Amino for, for cutie. Yeah, I was, just th- <laughs> I was immediately just thinking of fucking uh, any Mage Hand show with that sick-ass fucking giant head that uh, is always in the base. Yeah, game. yeah. That is a crazy Amino art. Oh, yeah. The Amino art from far away, I thought, looked kind of like... Tom York. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got him. 
Now I need to fucking Photoshop Tom York's face in the No Surprises video when he's in that yeah. like, space <laughs> helmet that just fills with water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the death mask in it, yeah. Uh. And much like that, it, it casts Reflect on itself and then on all of your party, um, much like Tom York does in that music video. Correct. Yeah, these things are rough. I I can't remember if I actually killed one or if I just ran from it because it's spooky. I, I killed one because I I was determined to kill one of everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least just to see how it went. Um and it's kinda tough. It's kinda tough. It's um if you're if you're if you're employing proper RPG maintenance, it's not gonna game over you, but it will kill some party members, like quite yeah. possibly, after it casts uh, reflect on itself and then flare. So it's kind of tough. Yeah, that's kind of the move of this dungeon where it's basically like if you have flair, you can kind of do the same thing where sure. you can you can you can get shit off onto uh enemies, but I don't have flair or holy, so it's basically like okay, I can only summon. And then it's like right. whoops, this boss mm-hmm. counter summons, I got I got to do something else. You know, I didn't get either of those in my playthrough. I didn't get to a high enough level. Yeah, I don't think they're super necessary, but Yeah, I don't think so. Um there's that guy actually on the first floor here, I think, is the final um, pedestal, right? Right. Yeah. Where we fought, we fight a boss that as I was streaming, everybody was like, all right, this one's a real motherfucker. You have to watch out. And then I fucking crushed this boss. Yeah. Get like it was ass. nothing. So <laughs> I don't I don't know who to believe. I don't know what to believe. I, I died to some ones that were not very hard. And then I crushed some ones that were like supposed to be very difficult. Ain't that just the way? Ain't that just the way? The thing is, this is a uh, Ogo Boingo. Pogo. Oingo Boingo. Oingo Boingo. Um, and it starts out like it starts the battle with a uh, either tidal wave on the old versions or deluge in the new oh, ones. Oh, this is this is the one that I was thinking of. This is basically just a reskinned Leviathan. Yes. Um, and that that attack does twenty five percent of your HP. Right, so it'll do, and when it starts out, it uses it twice. Yeah, so, like, it just I, fucking does it twice. I was like, God damn it, dude! So it's like a demi attack. It's like a demi attack. It will I, like I everybody realize, starts the battle with half HP. Yeah, I didn't realize that it was percentage based. And when I me saw neither, that, I was, I was terrified. <laughs> when I saw that, my first thought was just, well, rip to Curtis on this because I know the fucking 3D version is brutal with this shit. Like it probably yeah, just uh, wiped his entire party. Oh no, I haven't been playing the 3D version. I gave that up in the fucking giant of Babel. <laughs> I've been playing the SNES version. That's right. That's right. I I, I forget myself. <laughs> Deluge twice. Wait, if he uses, does it twice, does that mean you start with half health? Twenty five percent health. Uh, oh, it's just right qu- quarter health. Yeah. yeah. So does it always do max HP then, or is it? Uh, I believe it's of your max HP. Oof. Wait, half half of one hundred percent. I think it's half of one hundred percent again. Oh, okay. Like it's your max HP, I believe. Or you say twenty five. Twenty five percent of your takes. max HP, yeah. So it doesn't do twenty five percent of seventy five percent. Right, not of your current HP, of your max. Hang HP. Hang on, let me open up Microsoft Excel real quick. Figure out how much exactly it does. Maths. <laughs> this is why I don't like RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, fuck RPGs. It's literally just math. That shit's yeah, for but, nerds. <laughs> we get to our, at the end of our fourth season. Alex is like, <laughs> so I haven't told you guys this. <laughs> I don't like <laughs> RPGs. <laughs> Anyone can put a fucking sword in an Excel spreadsheet. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to go even further. Fuck prog music, because that shit's all just math, too. Fuck all yeah, ooh, music. Got him. <laughs> Fucking Chris Squire of the band, yes. Fucking <laughs> it. eat it. Adrian Blue, come on the podcast. Rick Wakeman, get the choices. fuck out of here. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, there's really. I don't think there's that much to Ogopogo. Um, it does uh, counterattacks if, if depending on what you do to it. If you hit it with lightning magic, it will use whirl. Uh, if you summon on it, it'll use frost blast. Uh, if you attack it with any other kind of magic, it uses frost blast. But if you just stick to your physical attacks, then you only have to worry about delusion attack, which makes him pretty easy. Yeah. It is very funny that he is named Ogopogo, even though he's supposed to be a stronger Leviathan, right? Yes. Well, he's named after uh, the serpent that lives in Lake Okanagan in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Ogopogo is Canadian? Yeah. <laughs> Every time he uses That's why tidal so wave nice. on you, he That's apologizes. That's why he's so polite. He's like, hey, yeah. I had to get these two attacks off, eh? But uh, hey, sorry. I only did uh, 50% of your health there. <laughs> 25% of your health there. <laughs> sorry. Oops, sorry. I think that might have been a little more Midwestern than uh than Canadian, but 
I gotta go back and watch more Second City C- uh, TV in order to g- up my my Canadian accent. What is Canada but real big wide Michigan? But real big fish. I mean, that's a good <laughs> point, Curtis. <laughs> Tim Horton. <laughs> Michigan plus Tim Hortons equals Canada. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know. I hope we don't have Canadian listeners. Um, that reminds me of the last episode when um, we were talking about Golbez's real name being Theodore. And I was like, Theodore, what kind of name is that? And then a, a listener and friend of mine was like, my son is named Theodore. And I was like, <laughs> literally, my best friend is named Theodore. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he he was one of the first people to rate our podcast five stars. Oh, <laughs> he talked about the time I broke his toilet. Oh, I remember. Well, I think you weren't <laughs> dumping on the name Theodore. I think it was just like the big baddie in the gaming na- yeah. name. Yeah, Theodore. Just yeah, it was, it was Golbez specifically becoming that. Yeah. yeah, Golbez is like, I did not tell you this, but we have two other brothers. Their names are Alvin and Simon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which one of us is getting the best head? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. We've already been talking too much about. Golbez's dick this season. <laughs> Either too much or not enough. <laughs> but uh did you encounter Zemus's breath? Yeah, slash there's also Zemus's there's, mouth. There's, yeah. there's also two very odd enemies here. Mm-hmm. I just again, I was just running from everything in this area. I'm like, I don't fucking care anymore. Just get me the fuck out of here. I need to get away from here so I can die faster at the end. Yeah, I think the um I, I forget what the breath does, but one of them is like Oh, I'm going to fiery re- dude. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to report this. I'm going to report. I'm you telling to the boss. Yeah. And he just uses like scan on you, which is kind of cool. Like that doesn't actually affect the battle coming up with, you know, it's just kind of cool. Like world. He building. just says reporting to master Zemus. Yeah. And then he, he scans you and he's like, Oh, this is, you know, I'm telling I'm like, he can fucking know he what I have d- 40,000 fucking HP though. Yeah, but I like I'm like yeah, fucking Zemus can know what how much HP and shit I have. I'm gonna know how much he has when I go to fucking Google. Like, <laughs> when I go to Game Facts and and some some kid from 2007 tells me how to beat this boss <laughs> in a thread where there's some weird drama going on and people are yelling at each other. <laughs> and then yeah, and then there's Zemus's malice, which is the purple one, right? Yep. Yeah, I forget what what he just kind of goes in swinging, right? Doesn't he just do an attack on you? Um. I ran away from this enemy, but I am reading about it on the uh, <laughs> on the uh, the wiki, though. Um, and it has 254 defense, meaning that weapon oh, attacks that's right. do one damage to it, and it counters every attack by casting protect or shell on its str- on itself. Yeah, what a fucking loser. Yeah, so it gets a uh, more it gets stronger as you go, but you can use Bahamut on it to um to kind of get through its damage, or um, just walk away. Or just walk or away. Use smoke and or teleport. Also, it is susceptible to Osmos. So if you need to replenish oh, yeah. your H or your MP for Rydia, you can do that on this guy. Dude, it doesn't drop or steal anything. You can't steal anything from. Well, it's level ninety nine, so you probably would never be able to steal from it anyway. Yeah. Which I will say that on this floor, this is the fourth floor of the uh, lunar core, and these are the only two enemies you can find here: are Zemus's malice and breath. Right? Interesting. The one that reports back, and the one that just has infinite defense. Very interesting. Like it really makes you feel like you're getting ready to walk into something that you shouldn't. Like you, there's not yeah. even behemoths here. You know what I mean? Like just these very odd, weird, silent enemies creepy it's creepy yeah it's weird they kind of look like the 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 dudes from prometheus but different colors yeah Uh, yeah (laughs) yeah like all these things look very prometheus they they look like they belong in a tool video yeah they do drop fifty thousand gills so i mean they're packing dollars yeah but what the fuck do you need gill for at this point what do they need gill for yeah they're just the concept of moon money zemus's breath and mind which yeah, in the uh, original economy, SNES, they're called mind. Economies in JRPGs are very strange to think about. That's true. Most items are all just a unified like one price. You can just go out into the field and fight <laughs> a fucking like bug and get some money. And <laughs> that's true, in that's FF8, true. you just get a salary, literally. <laughs> that's, that's also <laughs> true. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So I think that's all the enemies and all the items, right? Oh, we right. didn't say what we get for beating Ogopogo. We talked about Ogopogo, but didn't say that we get. The oh yeah, uh, Muramasa. It's, it's, 
Uh, it's not really an important item in any RPG at all. No, no, no. Sp- specifically um, a Final Fantasy and or Chrono Trigger. I like that Edge gets two final weapons. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, so that's... that's Especially because you can just throw them. Who cares? <laughs> you can just throw them. That's also true. Yo, I'm about yeah, to throw this is the Masemune. Yeah, indeed. Um, so yeah, he has the uh, Murasame and the uh, Masamune. So it's like the two legendary katanas, right? Like yeah, that's one, <laughs> fucking cool as shit. Did you guys read the uh, descriptions? No. Um, the uh, the first one, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, the one that's not the Masamune. Uh, Murasame. Yeah, the Murasame says, it is said that, that this is the best katana. And then you read the Masamune and it says, it is said that this is the strongest katana. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, one is like aesthetically best. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. One's like it's got the neon sign on it that says best coffee in the city, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, and that's that's it, right? Like the next tile that we step onto, it's it's fucking go time. Right? Yeah. Pretty much. I think that's about it. And um, if this was FF seven, thought- it would be time to plop down our save crystal. Yevin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the fight, Yevin. Um, yeah, and I thought that we were going all the way up to the end game today, so I was kind of rushing through this area and did not beat the final boss because turns out it's very difficult and it's even it's more hard. difficult. It's even more difficult if you don't have any Phoenix Downs. So I was like, I guess I'll watch <laughs> the fucking ending on on a Let's Play or some shit. I'll watch PewDiePie scream over it or whatever, like. Our next but yeah, we're not. We're actually. Not, oh God, damn it! <laughs> we're, we're not covering it today, luckily. So I get to go and like level grind or whatever I need to do to you know. Go get some. Uh, uh, but I was oh, like, sorry, you, don't, I, you don't have naming way in yours. So I was just like, go get some uh, pudding. I do uh, want to say to anyone who's playing along with us and is and is getting ready for this, just be prepared for a Seymour flux situation. Yeah. In that there is like a five to ten minute cutscene. Right before this fight, or you think of Unileska? Either or, just there's yeah, both of them. A, yeah, a cutscene that you can't skip, that you just have to watch, and if you game over, you just go back to the last save and have to watch it all again. The last save, by the way, is back where fucking the uh, the eyeball mm-hmm. guy was, right? Like, it's so you back should probably go back. Yeah, go back and save with all the loot you got. Prep yourself for the the final battle, and hopefully you don't have to watch. It's a really cool cutscene. I'm excited to talk about it next week. But I got so fucking pissed at this part that I was just like, got tilted. Uh, especially because what like in that in that area that we were just talking about, you have to walk all the way to the right and then like go forward. And there's an area on the left that has like nine tiles. It's a nice little square. Yeah. And there's What's nothing in the middle. And I'm like, you know, it'd be really fucking nice there. A goddamn fucking save point. Why isn't yeah. there one there to just cut down? Yeah, the- it looks like they made a space for a save point, and then we're like, and then they're like, nah, fuck them, <laughs> fuck Carl Germ in yeah. particular. <laughs> I'm like, Nomura, <laughs> <laughs> Nomura wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Nipora, rem- <laughs> Nipora, Nomura removed it because <laughs> no, he hates no me. Bore, no Boro. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was extremely frustrating, especially when I was like, okay, well, I didn't know what I was getting into at first, and now I kind of have a better idea. I can go back. And then when I walked back the second time, every other tile I got into an encounter, and it wasn't just like, oh, it's the death mask, so I don't take any damage, and I just run. It was like Behemoth and Red Dragon. Yep. I was just like, fuck, dude, this yep. sucks. And it was like every other fucking, like, I swear to God, one time I got out of a battle and got immediately thrown into another one, and I was just like, no, I- this game is making me hate it. I understand why everyone has has talked shit on this game to some capacity. I don't know if I've like talked about this on the podcast, but this entire time I've had a rule for myself that if I get into an encounter one tile away from the last encounter, I'm allowed to run from that one. I will <laughs> run from that one no matter what. Like I don't care if I'm grinding or what. I'm not doing two in a row. If you're in the final Won't dungeon for 15 minutes and a, and an enemy doesn't appear, then you're legally allowed <laughs> to leave. That's right, yeah. <laughs> my, my, uh, my one rule for this game so far has been try not to come, and uh, I'll let you decide uh, in your imagination how uh, successful I've been at that. I think after this, you may never come again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 
Well, join yeah. us next week when we will be um, making friends with Zemus. I, I imagine we can all work this out with words. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Diplomacy. Exactly. I mean, what has he really done to us other than ruined everything we've ever cared about and made us war criminals? We, uh, we walk in there and then Zemus is just like, y'all don't know how to be civil. <laughs> I, uh, I, I want to return to civility. <laughs> yeah, we get there and he's just like, wow, so much for the tolerant left. Yeah. <laughs> Zemus has real Ben Shapiro energy. We probably talked about that already, but I think he <laughs> he's just some fucking dude. He's just some dude. He's some fucking dweeb who probably has a high-pitched voice and all of his arguments are fucking stupid. Tomorrow we'll find where all these NFTs are coming from. Zemus the whole time. This area is just full of enemies that look like NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> the, the smoking monkey that I screenshot and pissed off the uh, creator of. <laughs> yeah, the death mask. <laughs> <laughs> so coming at you soon at everyfnff.com slash NFT, uh, you can get your very own try not to come death mask uh, <laughs> challenge token coin um which <laughs> also serves as a uh, an nft because we took a picture of it <laughs> i can't wait to actually like it's valued at about 4.6 <laughs> million dollars uh we'll give it to you real cheap for like 10k i or can't wait one, for the <laughs> one itunes five star review <laughs> I can't wait for our next piece of merch to be like to just say <laughs> every FNFF try not to come. <laughs> <laughs> I would finally buy one of our shirts. <laughs> where, where I have nothing jury else. Jury duty. <laughs> what a mess of an episode. I have nothing yeah. else to say to either of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sickened by this whole affair. I, I would apologize, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> Um, God, that, that upsets me so much that I can't even think of a witty, <laughs> a, a witty segue for Alex. Uh, <sighs> Alex, would you like to? Yes. Right. <laughs> would you like to try not to come? <laughs> yeah, I would love to. <laughs> Thank you, Night of the Round, uh, for the theme music. Just keep cranking out the tunes. Thank you, Nobu Uematsu, Junior Nakano, and Kenny Achiro. Kenichiro Fukui. I forgot to say that. Uh, leave us a review on iTunes. It really helps. Even if it's a bad one. Yeah. Um, it's fine. But like, don't <laughs> leave this, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Because they have said, no, I'm just we, kidding. <laughs> we, will, we will not stop saying like ever. Sorry. Yeah, we got a negative review and so they accuse us of making this podcast for us and not for everyone else. And you know what? You're right. You're correct. That's absolutely yeah, true. I mean, uh, Everything in that review is absolutely correct, and I'm sorry. I imagine it was <laughs> Hannibal Burris. Who, why are you booing me? I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but no hard feelings. They, yeah, they, yeah, um, yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, but speaking of, because they recommended uh, Retrograde Amnesia, yeah. uh, you guys were on Retrograde Amnesia. You guys were on Retrograde <laughs> Amnesia this week. It's uh, true. This week? Last week? I even know when it came out. Either way. Several months ago, but it released this week, yes. I, I count my weeks Wednesdays to Wednesdays, so yes, it is this week. <laughs> Those guys are real professional podcasts. Yeah, it's so professional. So Unlike good. us. So, if you want some polish, even more polish to your, your pod, instead of this, which is just a polished turd. They are truly <laughs> the, the squall to our Laguna. <laughs> and if you don't get that reference, you'll probably just have to listen to the episode that we recorded with That's them. Right. And rate them five stars, because they deserve it. Yeah, you guys were talking about just disc one of Final Fantasy VIII, right? Yeah, that's correct. And just, yeah. like, gen generalities of Final Fantasy VIII and why it's the best one, so. Hell yeah. So, yeah, Google uh, Retro AM or just, you know, go to our uh, link tree in our uh, bio on Instagram, and it's there as well. But, oh, you know what? Are we doing announcements right now? What's your announcement? Um, oh, hell December, yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, December 15th. Uh, my band Zaku is going to be playing at Milk Boy in Philadelphia with Moontooth what? and Johnny Booth. That's going to be really fun. Both of which are great bands. Don't just listen to my band. Go listen to Moontooth and Johnny Booth. Holy shit. Fantastic artist. But that is a that is a Wednesday. Whew. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm fucking very excited for that. It's going to be great. First Zaku show in almost two years. So hell fucking yeah. God, I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, I think the cool. last show I saw aside from the Mage Hand show that you guys just played. The last show I saw before the pandemic started was Mage Hand, so I am <laughs> so fucking ready for more. Or not Mage Hand, Zaku. Jesus. Zaku, yeah, I know what you meant. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I was like pissed that like the 
pandemic happened just before like Zaku was gearing up just as Zaku was like really like taking off yeah we had yeah, a tour especially scheduled. like Bleh. there were yeah you guys were gonna be playing with Bit Brigade at Johnny Brenda's like that's my ideal fucking bit and, like and St. Vitus with a uh, fucking um, Bit Brigade that was gonna be God, great anyway, so it doesn't good. matter it's not it's neither here nor there one of those it was a lifetime one, one day. ago it, it's another day. timeline it's the alternate timeline where mm. we don't get two star reviews <laughs> 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 um yeah uh we only have maybe one episode left of the season I'm, so drop us some i'm so excited we're gonna we're gonna announce what our next game is next episode so so yeah drop us a message at 530 materia if you want to hop in on the last one um at us on that note like people have been trying to guess what we're playing yes. but i remind you that the name of this podcast is every f and f f and i'll here's my hint we are not playing two three five six nine ten two eleven twelve thirteen fourteen or fifteen that is my hint. That's a pretty good hint. <laughs> Here's my hint. We're not going to be playing Final Fantasy X, Final Fantasy 1, <laughs> Final Fantasy 7. Definitely not going to be playing fucking Final Fantasy 7 Remake. And we're not going to be playing Final Fantasy 4. That really shortens the list, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd think with most series that would shorten the list, but with the Final Fantasy, I feel like there's like a fucking we're hundred on Final Fantasy. <laughs> World of Final Fantasy. <laughs> you can find us at every FNFF on Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, which I've I've been building a little playlist of just like relevant things to this podcast in there, including links to Zaku, uh, links. To, actually, yeah, you can listen to the new Retrograde Amnesia episode in that playlist too. Like I've I've been just posting things there to kind of accumulate little things. I'm literally going to YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, hop in our Discord. Um, come join the discussion. It's been good. Um, <laughs> good, not great. <laughs> it's, been, it's been good. It's been good. It's, it's been, been good. good. <laughs> but uh, yes, let us go to the moon. But Curtis and Carl stay behind. This time, <laughs> there may be no podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> See you next week, guys. See you all next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.